Math 200 students, welcome back. This is Dr. McGaffey, and we're working through decimal operations. Last time we talked about addition, and this time we'll be talking about multiplication, how to multiply decimals. Here's our procedure. First, you'll determine the sign of the product, so either, either it'll be a positive or negative number. Then we'll write the numbers vertically. We're going to line everything up to the right. We're going to completely ignore the decimal point. Step three, we'll multiply the numbers as normal ignoring the decimal. And then at the end, we'll count the total number of places to the right of the decimal in each of the factors. And that'll be the total number of places in the product. Um, and then step five is to write down your answer and don't forget to write the sign of the number, is it positive or negative. So let's just show how that works in practice. Suppose we want to multiply the numbers 2.3 times uh, one and two hundredths. So my favorite thing to do when I'm multiplying decimals is to write the number that has the most digits on the top and then the one with the least digits on the bottom. Okay, but it doesn't actually matter. And notice that I'm not lining up any decimal points here. I am uh, just lining everything up to the right, ignoring the decimals. And then we multiply each digit by each digit in, uh, in each factor. So 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 0, 3 times 1. And again, notice I'm ignoring the decimal point. I'm ignoring that decimal point, and I also put in my 0 placeholder so that I could start multiplying from the second placeholder. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2. And then I'll add all these values together, 6, 4, three, two. All right, now, notice I've completely ignored the decimal point. Now is my chance to go back in and see where the decimal point has to be in my product. So in this first number, I have two places after the decimal point. In my second factor, I have one place after the decimal point. So in the product, I should have a total of three places. One, two, three after the decimal point. So I know to include my decimal point right there. All right, so this is the procedure, but why does this work? I'm gonna go ahead and think about these numbers as fractions. So 2.3 could be written as two and three tenths, and 1.02 could be written as one and two hundredths. Um, and in order to multiply fraction, these mixed numbers together, really I want to convert them. Two, 10 times 2 is 20 plus 3. So this is 23 tenths times 100 plus 2 is 102 hundredths. Okay, so now you'll notice that to multiply these fractions, you'll multiply the numerators together. 23 times 102, that's like exactly what I did here when I ignored the decimal point. I did a 23 times 102, which is 2,346. And then in my denominator, notice I have one zero after the, you know, in the, in the denominator. And here I have two zeros. So when you multiply those together, 10 times 100 is 1,000, which gives you three zeros. And this tells you actually two, or, uh, 2346, so 2,346 thousandths, if you were to convert this back to a decimal, you would write all the digits and then make sure that your uh, digits end in the thousandths place, which is right there, which is three places to the right of the decimal point. So basically what this is telling you is to multiply the numbers as if you were just multiplying the numerators, ignore the decimal, and then count how many places, which is like doing 10 times 100 or whatever your place values are, you're going to add those uh, number of digits together, just like figuring out how many zeros you're going to need in the denominator here. So this is why it works. It's because it works with fractions. Let's do a few more examples. Here, let's multiply uh, 3.9 times 4.075. Uh, and again, what I really like to do is the number with the most digits, I'll write that one first. 
and then I'll write the second number, the second factor, and I just don't line anything up just as far as the place values, just make sure the numbers all line up to the right. And then we multiply digit by digit. 9 times 5, 45. 9 times 7, 63. Plus 4 is 67. 9 times 0 plus 6 is 6. 9 times 4 is 36. All right, now I move to the next place over, so I'll put in my place value holder. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. 3 times 0 plus 2 is 2. 3 times 4 is 12. And then you add all these digits together. And at some point, it's not really that helpful to do this all by hand. Um, sometimes we just use our calculator because these calculations get lengthy. All right, now we go in and say we have three places in this factor, one place in the second factor, so there should be a total of four places in my product. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Put the decimal point in right there. All right, let's do one more example. And this is a negative times a positive. So notice that the product will be negative. And now I can go ahead and multiply, ignoring the, the sign. I'll put 35 hundredths on the top and 0 0.02 right there. And let's go ahead and multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Okay, 2 times 0, you don't have to do that, it's just 0. And then you could put in your 0 placeholder and move to the next digit, but the next digit is a 0. And in fact, all the digits uh, preceding the 2 here are, are going to be 0, so I actually don't have to multiply them um, because I'm just going to get a whole row of zeros there. So now, let's count. I've got two places to the right of the decimal in this number and two places to the right of the decimal in this number. So in the product of those two, there should be a total of four places. So what we'll have to do is add in some placeholders. So one, two, three, four. The decimal point's going to go right there. So in these places, I'll have to add a zero, the digit zero as, uh, as a placeholder. And then remember that the product will be negative. So there we have it. All right, so this is multiplying um, the, the procedure and the reason why this works. But I also want to uh, equip you all with some shortcuts for multiplying by powers of 10. So to multiply, because we have a base 10 number system, all of our place values are powers of 10. To multiply by a power of 10, you're just changing the place values of your number. By, and you can do that by just moving the decimal point. So if you're multiplying by positive powers of 10, like times 10, times 100, times 1,000, really you're going to be moving the decimal point to the right, the same number of places as the number of zeros that you have in the power of 10. All right, and then you write those zeros at the end of the number as placeholders if, if you need to. So let's see what that looks like in practice. So uh, 5 and 63 hundredths times 10. So first, let me show you the long way if we were to do this. 5.63 times 10. If you were to do this the long way, you would see multiplying each digit here by 0. 0 times 3, 0 times 6, 0 times 5. You get a whole row of zeros. Now let's move over to the 1, which is in the next place. So I have to add a placeholder. 1 times 3, 1 times 6, 1 times 5. And then when you add those together, notice this whole row of zeros doesn't contribute anything to the sum. And then, say you've got two places here and no places there, so this will have two places. So the decimal point's going to go right there. Now compare these two numbers. 5.63 times 10 gives you 56.3.
notice that it just moved the decimal point to the right one place because there was one zero in this power of 10, right? So this tells you one group of 10, so that uh, increases each digit here by a factor of 10, so that moves everything up to the next place. So what was once in the ones place, that five is now in the tens place. The six used to be in the tenths place, now it's in the ones place. Three was in the uh, hundredths place, now it's in the tenths place. Everything gets moved up. All right, let's do this one, and this time we'll just do the shortcut. There are two zeros in this power of 10, so that means move the decimal right two places. So if our original number was 5.63 and we're doing times 100, we'll move the decimal point to the right two places to give us 563. And this should make sense because this is approximately 5, right? Times 100 should be approximately 500. Cool. All right, let's do this next one. 5 and 63 hundredths times 1,000. So notice I've got three zeros after in, in this power of 10. So I have three zeros, which means write three places. So my number was 5 and 63 hundredths multiplying by 10 to the third or 1,000. So I'm going to move that decimal point one two, three places to the right. So notice there was no digit here um, in this place value that I skipped over. So I will have to append a zero to the end of this number in order to keep that on, to keep that place. So 5,630 is my answer. Again, it was 5.63 and we went one, two, three places to the right. We had to add in a uh, zero placeholder.